Hey guys, thanks for coming out. I'm Burke Fry with Morph 3D. Um, I'm really excited to be here to show you guys, uh, kind of do a little workshop about uh, our, some of our latest tools that we're starting to release to our Morph 3D community. For those of you that don't know Morph 3D, we specialize in character creation. Our aim is to make uh, the creation of characters uh, very quick, very um, affordable, and very easy. And, and so we've had a product in the Unity Assets store called the Morph Character System for a couple of years now. And uh, one of the things that people have always wanted was the ability to add their own content into, into our uh, product. So with that, uh, you know, as I thought about what I wanted to, to share with the community, um, and, and share from my presentation, um, I thought of this uh, old Cartoon Network uh, clip, and I thought it would be a great way to kind of kick things off. So hopefully everything works. The meeting will come to order. The Legion of Doom is now in session. In a short while, the super, uh, yes, maniac. I was wondering, Luthor, if I could perhaps get up there. We need a few items to help us in our pen. some pants. A decent pair of pants. <laughs> Solomon Grundy won't pants too! Hold on! Alright. I don't know if you guys could hear the audio very well, but I think that frames up what our community has wanted for a long time. Um, the Morph character system has been really f great for a lot of people, but oftentimes the content library that we provide for the community doesn't fit all of their needs, you know? So people will email us and say, essentially, all I want is a decent pair of pants. I want to be able to put my own content into the system. Um, so several months ago, we released the, the beta version of what we call our artist tools. These tools are here to um, help you take custom content, content of your own design, content that you um, have, can find or purchase elsewhere, and put it into the system so it can help you um, mix and match. So um, with, with that, I'll get started. So I've got a Unity project set up, and um, this is an asset that we sell in the Unity Asset Store. We call it the Lawless Survivor. You know, as I looked at it, I didn't like the pants. You know, I feel like the pants look like mom jeans. Um, they just were pretty plain and uninteresting. Um, kind of riding a little high, I thought maybe there could be something better. So. I went to uh, a third-party website. I browsed through a bunch of uh, pants, and I found a cool pair of pants that I thought would be really cool, for, or much would be better for this character. So um, that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, the process that I went through to get a new pair of pants into, um, into this scene. And so let's jump over. So I'm going to go over to Maya, and um, the first thing you need to see and, and understand is uh, in order to, to bring new content into the system, you need to download our figure templates and our artist tools. Those are freely available on our, on our website, more3d.com. And the first thing you do is you bring in um, a figure template for the asset that you want to convert. So in this case, I'm doing Mel Pants, and so I brought in the Mel figure. Um, this has uh, all the levels of detail that we offer, so if you're trying to create pants that have multiple LODs, you can match the polygon density for the LODs that you're trying to um, match with the figure. In this case, I just wanted the highest quality figure with, uh, with, my, with my new set of pants. So I'm going to turn on the pants layer right now. As you can see, the pants that I found online actually don't fit this character, which isn't a surprise. Um, and so 
So you've got to do something first before you can process these pants to make them work in our system. So really the only thing you need to do is uh, resize them. You, you need to push and pull the vertices and a really easy technique for that is using a lattice deformer in Maya. Um, I know other software platforms have the same concept, so Blender, um, use the Blender equivalent or use the 3DS, and 3DS Max equivalent in this case. So I'm going to turn that on. Um, I'm not going to go through in this exercise uh, and do the whole process. I'm going to have to jump through different pre-saved files just because this probably took me maybe 15 to 30 minutes to go through and, and get all of the uh, pants, get the pants fitting to a state that I thought was was good. And you don't even have to be perfect. You can have some poke through and some um, overlap. But in this case, so real quick, I'm going to put everything on a template layer so I don't select things that I don't want to select. Um, as you can see, I just it's really basic. I'm going to I'm going to so just spend a second pulling vertices around. Um, you know, so I what I did is I did a few passes. I would um, use the lattice that has a certain level of density, and, um, and then I'd freeze out the, the deformation, and then I would add another lattice, and then so on and so forth until I felt like the, uh, the fit was right. So as you can see, if I, I push things all the way in, out, and Kind of a tedious process, but again, it's it's pretty quick. Um, so, without doing the whole all of those steps, I'm just going to jump into the next phase. Um, let's go to this one. All right. So, again, after 15 or 30 minutes, I've got a pair of pants that fit the character. Um, they're looking pretty cool. There's still some poke through, but that's okay because our artist tools will account for that. See these little spots of the skin poking through? You just want to get a, a pretty close approximation, but it doesn't have to be precise. Again, um, we want to make this like a fast and easy process, and so we do try to do as much lifting for an artist or a game developer as possible. Um, okay, so things look fine. Things look like they're ready to go. Uh, really the only thing I need to do now is I'm, I'm just going to do a quick check at my outliner um, and make sure I've got only the assets that I want in the scene um, and that I want to process because I'm going to export an FBX. I don't want to make sure I have any like hidden geometry or anything like that because the artist tools will pick up on that. So this is the figure template that I imported. I've, I've hidden the other LODs. That's okay. Um, this is the highest level of detail. And then it, this is an, these are these pants. They're unskinned. It's an unskinned mesh, and all I've done really is just resize it um, to fit the character. And so you would go file, um, export all, make sure it's an FBX. Choose your folder. Um, since I've already ex exported these military pants, test one. I'm not going to export. And what I'll do now is I'm going to open up our artist tools. Um, and again, it's a, it's a beta version, so you'll still see our Made with Unity uh, launch on it. Because this is very much a work in progress, but as soon as we felt like they were in a state to be helpful to the community, we made them available. Um, and they evolve every day, so we've got a lot of exciting things um, coming up for them. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just so you can see the full process, um, I, I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to label this, uh, we'll call it Demo Pants. And I'm going to make a note just so I can remember which one's the processing pants for the Unity peeps. And I'll hit Create. And um, OK, so there's just a few simple steps you have to do, and, and soon we'll be processing the content. So I'm going to import the geometry uh, that I exported. And we'll take it from there. So here's the military pants. OK. Pants came in just fine. Um, the, the way the system works, um, the MCS system works, is we have uh, these content packs. They're broken down by item components. So you may have a full outfit, but each outfit is, consists of multiple components, like a shirt or pants hairstyles, gloves, boots. 
et cetera. So um, all we're asking you as the user to do is tell us, uh, is to create an item and then tell us what type of item it is. So I'm gonna create a new item. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select these uh, pants to be part of this new item. And um, we have auto skinning available, so I'm gonna throw that into the mix. I'm gonna choose which template I want. Oh, hold on, first I need to name my pants. We'll call these demo pants. What type of function it is, it's just, it's a cloth. What figure we want to process it on. Um, and we'll go full body skin template. That means that we've got certain templates that are ideal for like say dresses or skirts or kilts, um, you know, and when they process for the head, it doesn't process for the ear. Because what ears, because um, what we're doing is we're doing a projection algorithm. We look out from the clothes and, um, or in from the clothes at the body, and we try to detect uh, what it's obscuring so that we can um, A, rig it, um, see what bones it should be attached to, but also hide the polygons that should be hidden underneath the figure so we don't have poke through. And of course, we want to bake in all of the morphs. Um, you know, that's what makes Morph 3D, the, the Morph character system fun, is it has 500 shaping controls. And in order for these pants to fit with any figure that you design with the Morph shaping controls, um, they need to know how to um, reshape themselves. So I'm going to save this item. And then I'm going to go to Oh, it's saving. One second. I sure hope I don't have a crash with, with everybody watching. That could be fun. Okay, I'm going to give this a second. I don't know if it's because I've got a bunch of things connected to the computer. Um, I may have to reboot it. Um, one thing I do want to point out while, oh, it's saved, okay, yeah. Um, you go to materials, I'm just going to do a quick setup of the materials. In Maya, I had a blend um, that came through when I imported the pants, and I'm going to rename that, so when I bring it over to Unity, it makes more sense. Again, I'm going to go demo pants. Um, I'm going to add the texture real quickly. And if you do all this stuff right now, when you bring it into Unity, everything's going to be ready to go. Okay, so Unite Prezo Pants, Textures, and I believe it's a JPEG. Search for JPEGs, and here it is. And let's add the normal map as well. We'll save the material. I could noodle with some of the material settings as well, but for the sake of time and expediency, I'm just going to move on. Okay, so essentially I'm, I'm ready to do the fun stuff, is, which is to process the pants and make sure that they will be compatible with the Morph system. Um, if I had multiple items, if I was set up, uh, setting up an entire outfit, I would just select the items in this project that I wanted to process. I could do all of them at once or just one at a time. Um, I wanted to create uh, my overlap mask, basically the mask that, that tells our system what polygons to cull, and then, the, uh, and then to, to generate morph. So with that said, I'll process this. Um, and, and we'll give you a little progress bar down below. This will probably take, for these pants, since it's, it's half of the torso, it could take a minute or two. So while that's processing, um, I wanted to point out something with the, uh, with the setup over here. Um, I was really excited to make, I found these pants, I thought they were really cool, and, um, you know, so I was, I was making this character over here, and with the, new, with the new pair of pants, and I noticed something that was, that didn't work for me, and I was really grateful that I had the artist tools for this, so, um, if I take off, let's see, if I disable this shirt, um, well, actually, it's probably better just to do a side-by-side. -side. If you look over here um, on this guy, this is probably the better way to show it. On his content packs, I have, uh, I have both pair of pants. And, you know, at first I was building on this guy, and I thought, cool, I've got the new pants. Things are going to be rad. 
Um, but I noticed that uh, the fit for my clothing, now that I brought these new pants in, wasn't right. So I'm gonna turn on those new pants, turn off the other ones, and I need to hit play in the game scene to update it. But as you can see, like I've got this, uh, this big space between the shirt and the pants. So like now that I brought these cool new pants in, my shirt didn't fit. And um, the great thing is with the artist tools, anytime you need to like make tweaks or adjustments to content to really get the look, the fit that you're looking for, um, you now have the ability to do these custom tweaks. And again, all, all I had to do was export that or bring that shirt into Maya. I put a lattice deformer on it with the, with the figure template. I stretched the vertices down just a little bit um, so it looked like they were tucked into the pants again. And uh, I processed the shirt and brought it, brought it back in as a Burke shirt. And now I've got a, a full outfit that, that fits the character. So I'm going to go back to the tools and let's check in. It's just finishing up, so it's processing morphs. 71% done. So I think we can wait for the rest of it. So this is the pre-flight section of the artist tools. After you set up the metadata that we need for, to, to make it work, we want to make sure that you have a chance to preview it and determine whether or not the results that you got, the, the overlap mask and the gen gen generated morphs, we wanted to make sure that those actually worked for you um, before you export out for, for Unity. So, okay, so it's finished, cool. Let's check it out. Um, you have all the morphs over here to choose from, which is, again, roughly 500 morphs, uh, so you can test with. What I've done, um, for the, what we've allowed for is uh, the ability to select your favorite morphs, the ones that you think best stress test the, the processing. And, and the one that I always like to drive the first is heavy. Um, okay, cool, so the morphs are working. Um, the five-year-old's really cool. It, you know, so maybe it'll do a little five-year-old, a little heavy guy. And um, even better is you can test how your skinning results work. So I'm gonna do a, a walk cycle and um, cool. So I feel like my pants processed just the way I needed them. Happy with these results. And with that, all I, if, I'm, if I'm happy with how this worked out, Great, if I needed to make changes like with the weighting, if you want to hand weight your, um, your items instead of doing an auto skin weight solution like I did, that's certainly possible. You just ignore the, uh, you would just paint your weights in your uh, platform of choice and those would import in. Um, but so this is good, so I'm gonna hit export selected and it should give me a dialogue window and um, I'll be able to, to save them out. Oh, actually it is, maybe it's already saving out as we speak. So again, while that's doing, while that's um, saving out, exporting out, um, the only thing you have to do now to, to make this work is to finish the, to finish the process, the cycle, is, uh, you know, go to your, go to where the exports were. In this case, uh, everything exports to your uh, projects folder, which you chose when you first launch the application. Um, so I go to demo pants, I go to exports, and I just drag these two files into um, Unity. Let's do that. And I put it in my content folder. And um, Almost there. Okay, that's it. That's the that was the full cycle of creating something that came from some random website that I then was able to process and get to fit on my figure. And then, on top of that, I was able to uh, use the artist tools to resize the T-shirt that then didn't fit. These the fit for these jeans turned out to be a little low instead of high, like the mom jean style which is what I liked, it felt a little edgier, and, um, and then I just went in and started to design the character. Um, so 
and, and and maybe I'll, I should drive some more in a second to kind of show you guys that indeed this this is content working in the, in the character system. Um, before I go on, I'm curious, how many people have used the Morph character system in the audience? Cool, it's a handful of you guys, right on. Um, how many of you guys that have used this have been looking forward to these tools? Yeah, so most of us, right? Cool, so um, yeah, it, it, it's, been a, it's been a long project to, to kind of get the ins and outs working in a way that we felt we could share to the community. But, but we do feel like they're finally in a state that, that they can be helpful for your projects and for your, for your efforts. Um, that concludes my workshop demo. I just want to um, highlight a couple updates that we've made to the overall product and ecosystem in addition to these artist tools. And then, I, then I'll open it up to um, Q&A. And, uh, and after that, uh, I guess that's it. That'll, that'll conclude my, my talk. So let me stop this real quick. Um, okay, so we've, uh, over the last uh, eight months or so, in addition to be working on these artist tools, you know, more 3D, and more 3D, we have a, a, again, we have the mission to make character creation as easy as possible. Um, that means servicing game developers, it means servicing VR and AR developers, um, making sure that the, the character system performs on those platforms, that it, you can, Use, char use the character system on mobile tablets, uh, mobile phones and tablets. You can use them um, in VR experiences. And, uh, and, and, and in addition to making this easy to use character solution for developers, we wanted to go one step further and make an easy to use solution for uh, everyday users, uh, people that are starting to use uh, virtual reality, um, that need avatars when they go into social VR. And um, we've, we've made some great partnerships and some great tools. The tool's called Ready Room, and we've partnered with uh, companies, the companies VR Chat and High Fidelity to uh, create avatars for, that, for, com for those community members. So the, the Ready Room, and you, can de you can demo it at our booth. You can do the VR version. You can do the tablet version or the desktop version. Um, the Ready Room lets you quickly spin up a character, and if you're in VR, it's really fun because you get to dial up this character, and it's driven by this Morph Character System um, engine of ours, and as you dial up the character, um, when in VR, when you finish, you can turn around, and there are portals to these uh, partner destinations, and you can literally step into those portals, and our application, the Ready Room, will shut down, your avatar data is transferred over to the social VR platform, and um, next thing you know, you're actually in another application that you walk through to, uh, in, in a virtual sense, and you're wearing the avatar that you designed. And um, why I think this is exciting for this Unity game developer community is uh, as, as more and more games and VR experiences become connected, and more and more people need um, high-quality avatar solutions, um, you know, we have uh, this great ecosystem that we're building out with uh, identity management and uh, content distribution, dynamic content distribution, so you can sell as game developers uh, assets to people that are using avatars built on the Morph system. Um, all of this is being built to help support the VR community, but it also benefits any direct game development. So. Um, you know, our aim is to make it so that this, as artists, um, make unique items for the system. They'd be able to put it back into the overall. So if I liked these, if I had the rights to these pants, which I don't because I just bought the license off of a, um, a website. If I had the rights to them, if I made them, and I thought other people in the Morph community would want them, I would, as an artist, be able to sell these to uh, the Morph community. And as a game developer, that content, um, you know, when we get to the next stage of uh, the Morph character system, if you build, uh, that content would then, these pants would then be newly available to the community if you chose to allow that. So you have dynamic access to this ever-growing um, library of community source content, which we think is pretty exciting. Um, and it's something we've done for years with our sister company, Daz, um, Daz 3D. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, I'm kind of running out of time in a nutshell, that's a nutshell of some of the new uh, things that we've done. 
and a quick overview of how to take things um, with the artist tools into, uh, into Unity. Um, and, and with that, I'll take some questions if you have any. If I do want to sell co my custom content on the store, how do I go about doing that? Who do I contact? How do I get started? I think um, if, if you're interested in making custom content like I just demonstrated, the best thing to do today, because there's two phases in what we're doing today, we would accept that. We, we would consider the application. What you would do is you would email myself, um, and, and I would curate it. I would say, hey, that's like some pretty cool stuff. I'd, well, I'd send it to our art director, Jeff Shoup. And if it, if it looks really good, we would um, we'd put it up into our store, and we would do a revenue share with, uh, with the artist and, and us. And so, so we would, we'll do that immediately today. We're actually building a uh, web portal so that this can all be done um, auto automatically on the website, on our website, to, for, to take submissions. Any other questions? Guys, thanks so much for coming out. <laughs>